Hello and welcome into the PHNX D-Back show brought to you by the DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top-rated sportsbook app. My name is Jesse Friedman. I am the Thunderstick, the vice mayor around here, and I am joined by these two goofballs today, uh, <laughs> Jacob Franklin and Sean DePaz. Uh, both both here together. I've only mm-hmm. ever done a show with one of you at a time. No, so we've I'm, done one before together. We definitely well, have done right, one together. But only one at a time. No, no, no. Did all, all three of us. I think all three yeah, of us. Because did we a had the situation before. We had to switch seats because Jacob was too tall and he got blocked by. Yeah, the, I know the Derek did level. one with you guys. I don't think oh, I did. maybe that. I think Derek yeah, did it while, while yeah, I was yeah, at man. the winter meetings. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. That, was two, that was two dads and a dude. So. Yes, yeah, he's got right. a forgettable right. face. So I don't know what right. this is. Makes sense. Two dudes and a dad. Just kidding. Jesse doesn't have a forgettable face. Thank you, Jacob. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, anyway, we're here talking about a pretty crazy report that came out yesterday about the Arizona Diamondbacks. That apparently, old friend Dansby Swanson almost returned to the Arizona Diamondbacks, almost (laughs) being, I I use that term loosely, we don't know exactly how close the Diamondbacks were to bringing him back, but uh, if we can pull up the tweet from Gambo, at Gambo987, John Gambadoro on Twitter, said the Diamondbacks still have some money to spend in free agency. They were in on Dansby Swanson and did make him a substantial offer a few weeks ago, an offer very competitive with what he ended up signing with the Chicago Cubs when he agreed to a seven-year, $177 million deal. Jacob, what do we think? Um, I mean, is it a better positive sign that they might be willing to spend a little bit of money? I think so. Yeah. Now, I don't know. I might be in the minority here. Like, Dansby Swanson's a good baseball player. But I think, I don't know if Dansby Swanson's a game changer. Like, yeah. in, my, in my opinion, I just, would it have been nice to have him? Sure. But am I sad that they didn't lock themselves into a contract that I'm not entirely sure is going to work out? That's fair. Yeah. I mean, Dansby Swanson is not like he's not Xander Bogarts, right? Yeah. Like yep. he's not he's not Trey Turner or Carlos Correa. Like he definitely falls in a different class here. Um, but I mean, you look at his numbers from last year. Honestly, I was kind of mind blown to find that he had five point seven WAR according to Baseball Reference mm-hmm. and six point four according to Fangraphs. Those are some really big numbers. Like that's not a pretty good player. That's like a a borderline elite player, frankly. Um, if you look at his offensive numbers last year, 277, 329, 447, those numbers don't really scream elite player. They're, they're pretty good for a shortstop. Uh, the counting numbers were good, 25 homers, 96 RBIs. He played all 162 games last year for the Atlanta Braves, so there's cer- certainly something to be said for that. Uh, Sean, what do you what do you think here? Is this a, yeah. is this a missed opportunity for the D-backs? I don't think so. I'm with Jacob kind of that. For me, this was more just encouraging that they at least showed signs that they're willing to spend money. Yeah. Um, I don't I'm glad, honestly, they didn't sign Swanson. I think doing it right now on a shortstop is not the move I would have made. Um, but my my biggest takeaway from this is like, oh, they're actually like they're getting ready to spend money. Um, hopefully they keep that energy. Because I think yeah. next year they'll be in a better position to actually make moves like this. Um, because I mean, as as Brett said in the chat, the backs of the Kings, so we were interested in and active within this player <laughs> and not signing them. Like it, it's cool, and it, it like you could get hopeful about it, but they actually have to make moves eventually. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I'm kind of right there with Jacob that I'm glad that this move ultimately didn't get go through while also being encouraged by the sign that they are willing to spend money. I'd like to point out what Raider Hawk says in the chat here. He says, I guess they're yeah. losing faith in Lawler's defense. And I think that was one of the biggest indications for me there because you heard that they were in on Bogarts. Mm-hmm. And right. now you hear that they were in on Dansby, which to me, because we, I think all three of us might be on the same page here that we think Lawler is kind of in the position that Corbin Carroll was last year where you might see him by the end of the year. Possible. Um, yeah, I think so. And this to me was kind of signaling a flag that it's like, okay, maybe he's not our shortstop of the future. We still like him. We can move him to third. Sure. So let's go out and find a defensive shortstop that that hits at a you know almost elite level and see if we can fill that hole and move Lawler yeah. over to third base. Yeah, I think like... It is a it is a good point. I mean, I think with Xander Bogarts, with that rumor, you could make the case that like, oh, Xander Bogarts is, you know, he hasn't always been very highly touted as a shortstop. Maybe Sean, you can you can speak to that having having watched a fair number of Red Sox yeah. games over the years. He had a really good year defensively this past season, at least according to some of the defensive metrics, but it's not necessarily something he's always been very good at, according to the metrics. Uh, Dansby Swanson, I think, is in kind of a different class. He had 20 outs above average last year at shortstop, which is really an insane number. You're not going to bring in Dansby Swanson for six or seven years and expect him to play 
you know, second base or third base or something. You're bringing mm-hmm. in Dansby Swanson to play shortstop probably for at least the first several years of mm-hmm. that contract. So I do think it's a it's a fair question uh, that, you know, maybe the Diamondbacks don't have a whole lot of belief um, that, that Jordan Lawler will stick at shortstop long term. Uh, and we talked about it a little bit yesterday on the show when when this rumor first came out. Maybe you kind of just, you know, kick the can down the road like you're not too worried about um, you know, how the positions shake out in the long term, those things have a way of, of kind of working themselves out. The point is Dansby Swanson's a really good player and, and the Diamondbacks certainly, certainly had a chance to get him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, anybody interested in a uh, little Javi Baez action next year? No, <laughs> <laughs> I know. No, too I know many strikeouts. Um, Can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I mean, Javier Baez is just not a very good player. No, I know, I know. <laughs> He's just not really that good at baseball anymore. Talking about uh, bad contract. Yeah, it, but it's going to be interesting. And something I brought up on on TPSP earlier, like if you are in a position where like you think because it seems if you're making a move like this, that signifies to me that you think you are closer to winning than I think the public does. Yeah. Um, if you think you're in that position, make a move at the trade deadline. Um, I, I just feel like doing that now before you know that you're in the position for that move to be but worth it. Am I crazy for thinking this team is an over 500 team as it sits? No, I yeah, I think. No. Not. I mean, yeah, 80, 84, 85 wins is what we're projected for on Zips, which is which is crazy. I mean, I don't know if people are necessarily going to buy into that just yet. Yeah. I think there's there's a period of time here where the D-backs are going to need to prove themselves before sure. anyone's going to be locking them in for for an 84, 85 win season. But yeah, I think to, to what you were talking about uh, earlier, Jacob, just like the D-backs... Uh, apparently have some money of, of yeah. some sort. Somewhere, right? some way. Yeah. Every uh, once in a while, King Kendrick's like, oh, yeah, like I've got some cash. Right, right. Uh, he, we, got, he got a Christmas present. He got money for Christmas, so now he's going <laughs> to get a big Christmas, the Christmas present, present sold the team. Was, uh, was the selling of, of Bam Tech, right? And <laughs> <laughs> apparently every every big league franchise made about $30 million. His big Christmas that. present would be selling the team. There was a there was a report that we yeah. talked about a couple days ago, which honestly wasn't a report. It, no, Gambo it, it became the Reaper of, again. Yeah, Gambo did Not what true. he's what he's famous for for doing in in the Arizona sports scene is shutting down you know everything that everyone wants. But uh, but yeah, there it looks like there's nothing to the Diamondbacks uh, possibly being for sale at least not at this point. Um, but yeah, it does speak to this team maybe having some money to spend. Uh, Sean uh, Manny Machado next next off season potentially. Listen, that, I'm, a Manny, no. I'm a Manny Machado fan. <laughs> I I like Manny Machado a lot. <laughs> it's not, it's not the guy you want around out. a bunch of young impressionable guys. I feel like nah. See, I feel like he has kind of done a 180 in his like. I feel like he is a better person than people think he is because of how he acted when he was younger. Sure. Um, I'm and that's big, very possible. He came in the league when he was 19 yeah, years old. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I I am a big fan of, of Manny Machado. Uh, so that'd be interesting. I don't know what kind of money that man's gonna be looking for, so I don't know about it in that regard. But just on its face, the idea of Manny Machado, a lot, yeah, yeah. (laughs) So on its face, the idea of Manny Machado being a a Arizona Diamondback is fun, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm wanting wanting to spend that. (laughs) It's a bit of a it's a bit of a pipe dream, admittedly. Manny Machado is still very very good. Um, Hey, someone mentioned in the chat. Carlos Correa still doesn't sign a contract anywhere, technically. <laughs> so the D-backs are going to swoop in and, and uh, get, get Carlos just say, Correa. I'm just saying, I wouldn't hate it. Well, as long as he's actually healthy. But I just, they would have to double what they were saying. offering Dansby. It's, it's wild to me that like nobody is saying that this issue with Carlos Correa is going to really hurt him in the near term. Like This seems to be something that you know four, five, six years down the road, that's really what teams are, are concerned mm-hmm. about here. Um, Carlos Correa, like this, this leg, this lower right leg issue hasn't bothered him for years. So yeah. it still blows my mind that, you know, it's been more than a week since, uh, since this contract was reported with the New York Mets and we still have no developments on that front. But, uh, yeah, Carlos Correa to the D-backs is a little, little far-fetched. But it's you can still, get him on a bargain now. Uh, I mean, you Shopping think, the bargain you bin, baby. Swoop in there, four years, a hundred million. He's damaged see, goods now. See what happens. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> Jesse. The D-backs do have some payroll flexibility moving forward. However, um, of course, after 2023, you have both Nick Ahmed and Mark Melanson coming off the books, as well as a number of you know one-year contracts the D-backs uh, just signed. One of them being Zach Davies. We'll get into him a little bit more later on. Um, Madison Bumgarner, of course, that contract um, will be up just at the end of 2024. Yeah. There's still $37 million there. It was an $85 million contract. The T-backs 
have hardly uh, reached the halfway point of the amount of money that they're going to spend on Madison Bumgarner, which is kind of crazy considering that we don't exactly hurt, hurt. know. We don't exactly know what his role in the starting rotation is. Closer. Uh, Make him a closer. Be. No. Not the pen. If you aren't signing Shintaro Fujinami to be your closer next year, I don't know what you're doing. No, make Shintaro him closer Fujinami now. Shintaro Fujinami is there, there's a quite a bit of risk there. I know. Uh, I mean, the guy pitched in the Japanese was... equivalent of the minor leagues last year for for a not insignificant number of games, but he did pitch well while he was you know pitching with with the NPB. So who knows? Um, other than that, we have. Um, According to Roster Resource, if we just look at the Diamondbacks' overall payroll situation right now, uh, their payroll currently sits at about $113 million, uh, which, from the D-backs' perspective, might really be about $117, because uh, they have to factor in the bonuses included for Zach Davies and Evan Longoria. Um, that's a decent number. At the beginning of the offseason, we were looking at this team and saying, like, well, it, they already are on the hook for $100 million to just basically bring back the exact same yeah. team that they had before and we kind of wondered you know is there actually a lot of room to add here you know what what exactly is the front office working with and it seems like the d-backs have had some money to work with here um we did talk about 115 to 120 something in that range being plausible and that kind of seems uh like that's what's going to happen yeah and i wouldn't be surprised if that's kind of where they sit for a while like until you start yeah. seeing them extend their younger players like what we've been calling for them to do to follow in the footsteps of Alex Anthopoulos and just start throwing out contracts for guys that are 22, 23 years old. Um, I don't expect that number to move, though, very – like, yeah. in, in the near future, I think that's kind of what they're going to sit at. Yeah, I mean, they, they clearly showed that they were ready to spend more. Um, so I, I, I'm i not ready to put anything past the Diamondbacks yet. Because, um, I, I, I mean, coming into this offseason, I was not expecting them to be this active in the, the shortstop market. Yeah. So, I mean – it appears to be something that they have a lot of interest in improving. So who knows if they, I mean, we were joking about the Carlos Correa thing, but who knows if they are actually going to try and improve it still. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't, if I had to guess, it's not going to be much different than that number right there. Yeah. I mean, it, it's interesting. Like, I mean, if maybe if the Diamondbacks had gotten Dansby Swanson, you know, maybe they, maybe they don't get Evan Longoria or they don't yeah. get Zach Davies or, you know, maybe that causes cuts elsewhere, but there's no way to, you know, bring in, Dansby Swanson and not wind up with a payroll, you know, 130, 135, yeah. something like that. So apparently there was some room to add here uh, if the di if if this this report is is in fact true um, and if the Diamondbacks, you know, um, were actually able to, to pull the trigger on on something like that. Uh, next offseason, I guess it's not just Manny Machado. You also have uh, Julio Urias will hit free agency at 27. The man is going to get paid uh, mm -hmm. because not that many starting pitchers who are that good. <laughs> Julio uh, slide through. He is he is an excellent excellent young starting pitcher. Um, I'd rather have Zach Allen. That's fair. That's Volcano fair. Dos. And and I mean Money. to to what what Raider Hawk Media said in the comments, the D-backs must start extending their younger players. There's a case to be made here that like. The best way to spend your money, if you do have this money available for guys like Bogarts or or Dansby Swanson, the best way to spend that money might just be bring back Zach Allen oh, right? or, or sign or sign I finally got Jesse to, to a say long term it. extension. Right? Um, I don't know. I mean, honestly, I think bringing back Zach Allen might be a matter of waiting until he hits free agency and bringing him back at that point. But you could at least you could at least try right one one so way or another. Money. But I think that's sort of where the D backs have to go here, right? Yeah, I mean, that just seems to be the trend, right? That if you, if you want to compete in a world where the Padres and the Mets and the Dodgers are dropping $800 million in an offseason, you got to start spending some money. But in the yeah. organization that you're in right now, you're probably best suited on being really good at drafting, which they seem to be right now. Yeah, last few years, and, last few years, it at least looks good so far. There's obviously, you know, when you when you rely on your drafting ability, there's obviously risk that comes with that, right? Mm -hmm. Like you don't. Yeah. Baseball is such a crapshoot. You could get an an MVP candidate in the tenth round, and you could pick first overall and find yourself somebody that never plays in the big leagues, right? Yeah. So that's the danger. But if you draft a kid and two years later you're seeing him in the major leagues and he's making a huge impact. I mean, you, you at least have to go out on a limb and try. Yeah, and I, try. Yeah. I, I yeah. feel like at at this point, the the Braves have set the example, and I feel like you're foolish yeah. not to try and and right. imitate them to the extent that you can. 
Um, that being said, I don't want them to get overzealous because with like a Jake McCarthy, for example, I've been pretty clear that I am nervous about him and that I wanted him to be the outfielder to go just because of his interesting expecting bat expected batting average and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, I how, mean the expected batting average for all of the outfielders yeah, was, not, was not not as good. good. They were all lower fair fair batting enough. average. Yeah. Fair enough, but um. Like I just don't I don't want them because like there's an, a situation where they they get overzealous they try to be the the Braves and now they're locked into a bunch of bad contracts right um so I they, I they need to exercise a little bit of caution in that regard but I do think that is probably the way to go because like I said with the Denzi Swanson thing I I do not think right now is the time to make that move um, yeah and I I agree with Jacob that it'd probably be much better to secure these young guys so you actually have a foundation you might swing and miss. Like, yeah. that, then yeah. that's the truth, right? You might and swing Braves, and miss. The you, Braves might swing and miss too. They've got like, a ton of contracts that that's yeah. still a bunch of they've unproven guys. They've extended a lot of players th- for a lot. Well, of right, years they wait for one one good year, right? Essentially, one full year. So, I mean, in some cases, not even one full year, but yeah, right. but at least. I mean, they haven't even yeah. had Sean Murphy play a game. Yeah, for them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's at least played. I mean, he's been a big leaguer for a while, sure, right? It's not sure. like like what they did with Michael Harris. But where it's almost kind of like what happened with Paul Goldschmidt, right? Yeah. So like Paul Goldschmidt comes up in the big leagues. The year after he gets called up, he, I think if I remember correctly, he was a serviceable baseball player that hit somewhere in the realm of two, 250. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was his first year. Yeah. He got extended after the 2012 year, yeah, I believe. I believe that's So correct. he hit yeah. 290, 20 home runs and 82 RBI. And they were like, okay, we need to extend this guy now before he, you know, we deal with the whole wait for arbitration, right. take some battles. They extended him for like five years, $32 million. Yeah, it was and absolutely that was absurd. quite possibly one of the best <laughs> contracts that's ever been given out <laughs> from an Arizona team because two out of those five years, he was probably the number one candidate for an MVP award. Maybe yeah. not the Bryce Harper year. I think he got kind of snubbed by Andrew McCutcheon. Yes, that season. yes, but that, that narrative will never die in, yeah. in Arizona. That's for sure. So I mean, but you got an MVP caliber player for that whole contract, right? And, and, and it would have been worth the gamble, like even if Paul Goldschmidt had just been that same guy that he was in 2012, 290 with 20 home runs yeah, and 82 like, RBI. I'm like taking that all day long. You would have probably been okay with that too. So yeah, and in my uh, my story for diehards last week, I took a look at the outcome of every top 100 prospect the D-backs have ever had mm. in the history of the franchise. Not good. And uh, yeah, on it, the results, if, you, if you've if you gotten a chance to check out the story, if you're a diehard, the results are not, not great. Uh, but what was fascinating to me is that Paul Goldschmidt's not even on the list. Uh, <laughs> he was never a top 100 prospect, at least not according to Baseball America. Nobody saw um, it coming. Nobody, nobody saw it coming. Whereas with a lot of the young guys the D-backs have now, they have been on on mm-hmm. you know these prospect lists. They have been highly touted. It's just a matter of of taking that next step. I could see a scenario where at the end of 2023, we're coming back here and we're saying, okay, these are the guys you need to extend. You've seen enough now from you know Alec mm-hmm. Thomas or Jake mm-hmm. McCarthy or Corbin Carroll, whoever it is. These are the guys that you need to extend and need to uh, you know get the ball uh, moving on that front and and try to spend your money in a way that can keep the core together, which which what we've been saying and what I think a lot of people um, in, in our audience have been saying too is we want to keep these players. We want we don't want to see. Fun. Yeah, we don't want to see, you know, these guys uh, come up here and be so good and then walk, you know, once they hit free yeah, agency. I'm, and that's the end of the story. I might be in a minority here, but it just feels like watching this team play. Like they might be lacking some power. I yeah. think across the lineup, right? Like yeah. Christian Walker is going to get his Dalton fair share of home runs. Definitely. There's no Dalton Varsho. Yeah. They're going to be missing a little bit of power. But I might be in the minority when I say that like last year, I had more fun watching them kind of link together those eight or nine run innings yeah. Yeah, yeah. when it was just like single, double, triple, double. Yeah. They're just like it starts with some uh, Corbin Carroll getting on base and stealing second base. Like it, it was one of those like as soon as somebody was on base, you just felt like something good was going to happen. Yeah, because they just put so much pressure on in such a small ball like type of play mm-hmm. that I think that was more fun than just watching a guy who hits 40 home runs and strikes out 160 times a year. I would not mind seeing someone hit 40 home runs. Um, <laughs> no, but yeah, no, I, sure. I, I'm with Fair you. Enough. Like, like the Diamondbacks were watching the Diamondbacks la- last year, and this, saying this is someone who grew up as a Red Sox fan and watched them win three World Series. It's some of the most fun I've ever had watching baseball. Like, yeah, watching just like the young guys run all over the ballpark was in, it was enjoyable to me. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, the power might be lacking a little bit, but I don't think the Diamondbacks are going to be any less fun to watch necessarily. Yeah. 
Sean, you you ready for the tea party? Week, uh, week oh. from week from tomorrow. I've I've been ready for the tea party. <laughs> <laughs> been ready. Uh, join us if you haven't already heard about it. I honestly don't know how you possibly could not have heard about yeah, it. We tell point, about if, if, if we you, tell you about it every, every been, single day. every single day. You've been hearing about this for like two weeks, but we're going to tell you about it again because. If you haven't uh, already signed up, you, you need to do that. Uh, join us at the inaugural PHNX Tea Party presented by our friends over at Four Peaks. That is happening at Dobson Ranch Golf Course next Friday, Friday the 13th. Makes me a little bit nervous about it, frankly, but I'm, <laughs> I'm getting over it. Um, we are renting out the entire driving range over at Dobson Ranch Golf Course. Come hang with Big Drive Energy, the PHNX crew, and fellow diehards for a night of golf, free food, drinks, contests, prizes, and more are... PHNX Suns crew will be our troubled PHNX Suns crew will be hosting a watch party for the Suns versus Timberwolves. Um, that that basketball they're quite team, depressed they, they, right they, now. They just that that basketball <laughs> team continues to struggle. Uh, Four Peaks will also be out there providing beer samples and swag. Check the link in the description to reserve your spot right now. And for our diehards, check Discord for your special link where you'll save twenty percent off on this awesome event. Uh, Sean, I've been talking about my ping pong abilities quite a bit. Is there Ooh. any is there any trash talk you would like to to put out I there? I think I could dunk on Jesse the... in a ping pong match. I <laughs> I am like an okay ping pong player, so I have to see what kind of okay game you have. That's not that's not one of those things that I'm like uber confident in. Um, but I'm like still a, I, I'm still ready to play. I'm still and I'm I'm gonna come and win. We're doing but, like a, a shootout, like some sort of a basketball. Yeah, I shooting shot thing. a glory. In, shot a glory. If that's terrible. If you're, that's a, cool. if you're a um, What's it? The, the waste management fan on the Wednesday pro am. They do this thing called the Shot of Glory Wednesday evening. Uh, it's where all of the celebrities that took place in the pro am event they all get together on sixteen and they like for charity see who can get closest to the hole. Ah. Winner gets X amount or whatever. Um, yeah, we're not doing that at all. <laughs> uh, I think it's just a three point contest. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, well, I'm glad we know what it's inspired uh, by. It's a half court shot. It might yeah, be a half court, court shot. Court you might shot. be correct. Oh, okay. Half court shot. There you go. I uh, made a couple of those in my day. So, ooh, all right. So, let's see. Uh, Gabriel says Jesse needs to be humbled, which, uh, you know, I, I've, I have talked the talk. Uh, almost, we'll, we'll see if I can walk the I walk. I almost got here. killed in the real shot at Glory last year. There's video evidence oh, to yeah. prove that. Dude in front of me. Poor man might not have be having kids anymore. <laughs> oh. oh, no. Um, Friday night. Next Friday night will also be a great night to take advantage of our friends over at OG's. Uh, check out their new CBD THC Happy Balance Ratio flavor. Strawberries and cream. As always, you can find them at your local dispensary. Must be 21 plus to enjoy. Uh, have we tried this strawberries and cream thing yet? Not yet, but I am highly anticipating it. Strawberries and cream or like a strawberry shortcake thing is my one of my favorite desserts like I, I, mm, mm, I can, yeah no i'm very looking forward to trying it there you go um so like i said as always you can find them at your local dispensary must be 21 plus to enjoy uh zach davies returning to the arizona diamondbacks on a one-year contract worth five million dollars with three million dollars in incentives which appears to be based on the number of games that he starts I've also seen from a couple of different sources that there's a mutual option for 2024, which was not uh, initially reported yesterday. The D-backs haven't officially announced this this move yet, so uh, those official details are still to come, but it does look like there's a $5.5 million mutual option in place for 2024 as well. Uh, of course, the D-backs also had a mutual option uh, on the deal that brought Zach Davies here last year, so this is sort of a, a similar similar construction uh, of a contract for Davies. Uh, Jacob, initial initial thoughts? Um, think what you want about Zach Davies, the person. But Zach Davies, the pitcher last year, <laughs> had a 3.94 ERA before he went out with a shoulder injury and was a great piece at the four spot yeah. in the rotation. Like, there's not really much else that needs to be yeah. said other than he showed flashes of being a really, really decent piece at the back end of a rotation. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with it. It is it's one it, it doesn't really move the needle much for me either way, but it's sure. it, it's a good solid spot at the back of the rotation and if he can I mean if if obviously there's a lot of I guess not questions about what the rotation will look like, but a lot of flexibility with what the rotation can look like, like if he can be a solid like you could trust him to not maybe not win you games but not lose you games. Sure, I, I will take that at this on the contract. I also think it's really smart that they're able to kind of keep him in the rotation and ease in Dre Jameson and yeah. Ryan Nelson. Sure. Who they, you got to look at at the end of last year. It's easy to say, oh my God, they were so good 
in yeah, their I mean, they, 18 they inning, each, they 18 each had like a 1.5 ERA. Yeah, eight. they looked so, phenomenal. So one of them should start on opening day, right? Yeah. That's what, that's so what that means. I, but this is, <laughs> I think this is much, much better for them. Give them some time with Strom to work out a few things that he might have seen last season yeah. that he didn't like. You know, even if you feel the need to let them alternate or if you feel somebody has the edge, give them the fifth spot. Um, we're kind of overlooking Tommy Henry in that whole regard. Like yeah. people have just kind of forgotten about him, I guess, in the mix. Yeah. For, you know, if Mad Bum goes down, he's your only left-handed starter. So This is true. Where are you going to get another one? Because you can't just go five straight righties. You have to change the... I mean, you, you could. You could, <laughs> but you got to change it's the It's a little list. weird. It's a little weird. You could. Um, if they're all good, if they all throw gas and they all have a one one five, why not? If they're your five best starters, then I, I think that's probably just what you do. Uh, we tweeted out earlier today uh, just kind of a list of all of the Diamondbacks uh, rotation options that they have after making this move. You can see that here on your screen. Uh, Zach Gallon, Merrill Kelly, of course, those are your number one, number two starters. Uh, then you have Zach Davies slotting in. You've also got Madison Bumgarner. <laughs> Madison Bumgarner, of course. We're not totally sure what to expect. Uh, Mike Hazen was asked at the end of the season whether Madison Bumgarner had a guaranteed spot in the rotation. He kind of danced around the question. That said, contract you know, he, says he does. You, think, you know, Hazen talked about how an incumbency probably matters. Those those were his exact words. But he also talked about how, you know, they, they've upped the they've upped the level of of performance in the rotation and at least up the level sure, of competition. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, we'll we'll see. We'll see what what happens with Bumgarner. Uh, and then, of course, as you mentioned, Dre Jameson, Ryan Nelson, Tommy Henry, Brandon Fott, guy we've talked a lot about recently. Uh, fought, led all of minor league baseball in strikeouts last year and put up pretty bonkers numbers at, at AAA Reno. You figure he's right on the doorstep. Tyler Gilbert is still in the organization, um, had an elbow issue at the end of last year, so he would need to, to bounce back from that. Uh, you also have Corbin Martin, who is on the 40-man roster, but it's a little bit unclear what, um, sort of what his, his future holds at this point. Uh, Sean, when you, when you look at this list, is, is it impressive? Is it Kind of meh. What, what do we what do we think? Um, here? I think I, it's. I feel like it's just a microcosm of the D backs in general. It's like there's hope. There's hope. <laughs> there's, there's, hope. There's, there's. There's. I think two there's guys some there that could go right. Yeah, there's two guys there who are clearly like you're expecting big things from. Yeah. And outside of that, it's like okay, you're hoping Zach Davies could at least be, uh, I guess what he was serviceable? last year. Yeah, serviceable. And if he gets hurt, you have a plethora. And of people. you're hoping that yeah. someone makes it so you don't have to play Madison Bumgarner, or that Madison Bumgarner somehow figures it out and is good again. Um, but I just think there's there's hope and potential there, especially with some of those young guys that it could be exciting. But I it, I don't think it's like I'm not looking at it right now and being like this is one of the best rotations in baseball. No, uh, no. But I think there's there's pieces there where at the end of the year you could be pleasantly surprised with how well the rotation performed. Think about what could be if Madison Bumgarner somehow returns to a semi form of his old self. That'd be nice. That'd be very yeah, nice. Be nice. I mean, be... one through three. Even if Mad Bum is not, you know. 100% 2012, 2014 Mad Bum. Right. Like, even if he gives you a 3-7 and he wins you 13, 14 games. That would be huge, honestly. Yeah. Madison, you might have the best Madison one through Bumgarner three. If Madison had a 3.7 ERA, I, would I mean, be, that, I would, oof. D-back's probably going to win the World Series. At that yeah, point. I'll like, get a I mean, jersey. I'll get a tattoo <laughs> on my back. I don't like that. Would be, I would... No, not that. But <laughs> I, I would, I would be, I would be floored if that happened. Um, and hopefully they sell high at the trade deadline and get rid of them, so we don't have to. Yeah, somebody somebody might be willing to take on a two-year, thirty-six million dollar contract if he looks good. Yeah, if if yeah, and I mean, I I wouldn't say it's totally impossible that something like that could happen. Like we talked about a lot last year, the issue with Bumgarner wasn't really the stuff. Like the the movement numbers, the velocity was pretty similar from some of his best days in San Francisco. Uh, he just wasn't hitting his spots, frankly, and and that seemed to, you know, if you don't have overpowering stuff, which Bumgarner never really has, and you're not hitting your spots, it's uh, it's not gonna not gonna go well for you in the long run. Uh, I looked back at at the D-back stats from last year uh, in the starting rotation, and I was particularly interested in trying to figure out how many starters they used over the course of the year. They used 14. They had 14 mm. different pitchers start games in 2022 one of them i think was kyle nelson which was like a goofy spot start situation or something like that um but all that to say like when thinking about the rotation for 2023 you can't just think about one through five you have correct. to think yeah, about correct. who's number six who's seven who's eight who's nine who's even like 10 and injuries beyond. are inevitable injuries are absolutely inevitable and 
for a team like the Diamondbacks that has so many young guys who could be great, but also could ten really man rotation. struggle. Yeah, yeah, right. You should just have a 10-man starting yeah, rotation. That's, that's the Change only way to the look it. every day. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, there's some serious, like, there's a lot of volatility in the different outcomes that could happen. And I think the Diamondbacks um, would be wise to try to make sure that they have a good amount of depth there. Uh, and the Zach, the Zach Davies move seems to seems to do that. He just gives them a little bit more stability. Um, maybe he's not, you know, winning them games necessarily. He was about a league average pitcher last year. Um, but I, I do think it it makes a lot of sense for them in the long run. Uh, if we think about this this offseason as a whole for the Diamondbacks, just kind of thinking big picture here, you sign Miguel Castro and Scott McGuff for the bullpen. Um, High upside. There's some upside there. Uh, Castro Castro is bizarre where he throws 98 miles an hour and has this really nasty sweeping slider and yet had a four ERA for the Yankees. <laughs> and it's kind of unclear exactly. He pitched uh, in a toy ballpark. Yeah, because he, he pitched for a cursed franchise. That's a joke. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, baseball baseball. In, in Sean's unbiased opinion. Yeah, um, completely unbiased. Miguel, Miguel Castro, uh, the issue there seems to be that his sinker, when, when guys hit the sinker, they're just doing insane amounts of damage that that was kind of my my initial findings on him so uh, nonetheless still a, a solid arm a guy that you can sort of count on he's relatively well established uh like i said scott mcguff uh the d-back signed him of course he'll be coming over uh from overseas put up some really good numbers as as a closer um evan longoria and zach davies neither of these moves have been officially announced but we've talked about them quite a bit at this point um and then, of course, the big trade, Dalton Varsho to the Toronto Blue Jays for Gabby Moreno and Lourdes Gurriel Jr. Um, and then the D-backs also traded Cooper Hummel for Kyle Lewis uh, earlier in the offseason. And there were some other smaller moves. They got Carlos Vargas from the Cleveland Guardians, uh, traded a minor leaguer. They got Diego Castillo from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, Jacob, on the whole, how do we feel about what this Diamondbacks team has done this off this uh, this offseason? I think it's a pretty successful offseason. Like, I know people are going to be disappointed that they're like, oh, we didn't spend a bunch of money. We yeah. didn't get Dansby. We didn't get Xander. Did you see the contract that Xander got? Yeah. <laughs> and also, you weren't expecting them to be even be even be the, yeah, yeah. in on those guys. Yeah, you didn't want them to be until you thought they were going to be. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> you were like, no, we shouldn't do that. And then they were like, D-backs are interested. You're like, yeah, we should do that. <laughs> we should do yeah. that. But yeah. no, I mean, all in all, I think they made the moves that they needed to make. I think there's sure. still some help needed in the bullpen um but you also could look internally for some of that there's some guys that you know we didn't see jb bukowskis last year uh, i don't know if that was because after his injury they didn't really like what they saw yeah or if they just were reserving him another year to kind of get him some reps in the minors and and, and pull him up this year yeah um uh some a guy that i'm going to be really tracking his his progress through the minor leagues this year is landon sims when he's back from injury, like I know he's going to start low, but I think he's one of those guys that you could see him move up the ranks really, really fast. You might not see him this year, but that's definitely a guy you could be looking at for like your closer Craig, of Craig the Kimbrell comparisons. Yes. Oh. I mean, I hate it when they do that. Like when player comps, the but the dude, report. the dude's well, just a straight like, baller. Just like uh, player comps are fine, but Craig oh. Kimbrell player comps for, I don't know, for a guy in college is, oh. that's a little bit. Dude's a straight baller. Me, but, like it yeah. struck out a, just a boatload of guys. Yeah, yeah. he just, really did. Just yeah. a boatload. Yeah. I mean, it was, I don't know how you can't be pleased by the offseason so far. Like, I, I, I think, like Jacob said, there's still stuff to be done. Um, but uh, they so far have done, I think, like, I love the, I love the, the bar show trade. Like, I, I, I yep. love that trade for the D backs. I love Lourdes Guriel. Um, and obviously he's like kind of the piece B to that trade. Um, yeah. so I, I love that trade. I, I think the Kyle Lewis trade is just, it's, Fun, like it's a nice little thing, and I think that's Shane, like, Shane Diefenbach is yeah. convinced that Kyle Lewis can yeah. get 45 yeah. homers. But I mean, it's a, it's a, I think it's a, <laughs> another like high upside move. Um, so I, I'm I'm super pleased with that. I think I think I was so focused on the bullpen coming into this year or in, coming into the off season that they've yeah. done things. They've obviously done like a couple of things for the bullpen, but the the stuff that they've done outside of the bullpen has been like a I guess nice little pleasant surprise for me. Um, hmm. and, and I also like. As like just from like a casual perspective, the fact that they're getting names that people know, like even though he was not like he is what he is, but like a Kyle Lewis, like people know that name. Uh, yeah, uh, Evan Longoria. Yeah, like Gabby Moreno is like a big a prospect. Lourdes Uriel, like maybe just because of his hair and he has a brother that won a couple World Series, but people know who that <laughs> is. Like it, it, I think th I think these trades have also done a little bit to get D backs fans excited about the D backs, which I I think is 
a pretty valuable part of of offseason addition. So I, yeah. I am I'm very pleased with it so far. Raider Hawks says Justin Martinez could be a decent closer. Justin Martinez is definitely Possibly. another name to keep an eye on. Yeah, um, I, I this still say throw Madison leagues. back there. So as it stands happens. right as it stands right now, is Mark Melanson still your closer? I don't know, honestly. I don't think so. I okay. think uh, Mike Hazen, after I think the Scott McGuff signing, said that um, he was asked, like, is it most likely a closer by committee or something like that at this point or a spring competition? And Hazen basically said, yeah, probably a spring competition of some sort. Um, he talked about how Tori Lovello likes to have a closer, whereas the front office is maybe a little bit more open to having that role yeah. float around a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think it's likely that Tori Lovello will want a closer going yeah. into opening day. And you say I hate closer by committee. Yeah, clo- yeah, yeah. I, I'm not a fan. There, there is. I think there's a valid case to to be made for that. Um, but yeah, it, it is a little hard looking at this roster. Like who, who's gonna be that guy? Like, are, you know, are you relying on on Scott McGuff coming from? You know, coming from overseas and, you know, he was a good closer there. Is he going to be able to, to replicate that in the big leagues? There's sort of a big question mark there. Um, but, yeah, we'll uh, we'll we'll see. Um, yeah. And Justin Martinez is, is a name to keep an eye on, too. I think as far as the bullpen is concerned, like, no, the D-backs didn't go out and sign Kenley Jansen or something. But they also have some more intriguing options here than they did before with Justin Martinez, with Carlos Vargas coming over from Cleveland. There's some big time stuff, uh, just like swing and miss stuff that they have access to now that they, that they didn't before. Um, it is a uh, diehard Thursday here. Uh, Are you a means diehard, Jesse? I, I am. I am a diehard. It's sort of part of my job description. I don't think I really have a choice, but you <laughs> do have a contract choice. And it just the stamp says diehard. Right, right. Uh, you all have a choice to become a PHNX diehard and uh, we would love you uh, if you if you did that, I mean, we'd love you anyway, but we would especially love you uh, if more. you did yeah. that. Uh, Die Hard Thursday, of course. Um, my weekly newsletter comes out on Thursdays. That'll be out uh, later this evening. So be sure to uh, keep an eye out for that if you are a Die Hard already. Uh, the perks, uh, you get a free shirt or hat every single year. You get access to that premium Die Hard level content, not only from me, but Gerald Bourget, Craig Morgan, uh, Howard Balls are covering the Cardinals, our entire uh, writing crew that we have here and you also get 20 percent off merch and events like uh, the phnx tea party that we discussed earlier so become a phnx die hard today if you haven't already uh, you can go to gophnx.com slash die hard in order to do that i uh, also want to tell you about our friends over at the DraftKings sportsbook app uh, the nba season is heating up uh, not so much for uh, the Phoenix Suns, unfortunately, uh, but it it is heating up for you know the the rest. Of, the NBA is just weird <laughs> this year because it it feels like I don't know like there aren't the, the best team in the league has, has our, I think is the Celtics and they've lost like twelve games. The best or team in the league like, is twenty and nineteen. There you go. I like that. I like the way you think, Jacob. Overly confident. Anyway, uh, the NBA season is heating up, and there is no uh, better place to go to place some bets on the NBA than our friends over at the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Download the app now. Sign up with code PHNX. Place a $5 pregame Moneyline bet on any NBA team to win their game and get $150 in free bets if they do. That's code PHNX only. At the DraftKings Sportsbook, minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. And speaking of the DraftKings Sportsbook app, we're going to spend a little bit of time uh, here at the end of the show. <laughs> Brian says, son's putting the die in diehard memberships. <laughs> that's, that's, that's tough. Um, <laughs> I, I, I promise you it's not that bad. The Suns aren't, the sons aren't that bad? No, they're like, okay, the Suns are bad, yes, but like, eh, I'm okay with that. You're okay. You're okay with the Diamondbacks are going to win the World Series. Yes, I was. I was here when they were uh, here at the office when our Suns crew was watching the Suns game yesterday, <laughs> and I just point blank asked them, "Are you Are you guys prepared for the Arizona Diamondbacks to be to have the best record of any?" Uh, professional Arizona sports team in in 2023, and they were like, "Yeah, it, it could happen." I can promise you, they'll have more wins. Ignoring the fact that they play twice <laughs> as many games, I bet you they'll have more. They better have more wins, Jesus. I hope they have more. Yeah, they I hope better, they have more wins. They Something more has wins. gone seriously wrong if the Diamondbacks end up more wins in 162 games uh, as the Suns do in 82. But anyway, uh, we're going to spend a little bit more time with our uh, friends over here at the DraftKings Sportsbook app, uh, looking at some bets that you can place on Major League Baseball. Uh, there's not a whole lot of betting, of course, that you can do this time of year, but there are a few things you can bet 
on uh, who will uh, win the World Series. You can bet on who will win uh, the pennant in each league. Uh, and you can also bet on who will win each division around the game of baseball. Uh, Jacob, you got any any bets on the DraftKings Sportsbook <coughs> app as, as far as baseball is concerned that, that look good for you? The Arizona Diamondbacks are plus 13,000 to win the World Series. To win the World Series. They're only plus 4,000 to win the division. However, I don't think they're going to win the division. I think they're going to be that sneaky team that gets in in the wild card. And then they somehow go on a tear through the whole playoffs. They're going to win the World Series plus 13,000, my DraftKings Sportsbook pick of the week. So your DraftKings Relax. Sportsbook pick of the week is that the Diamondbacks will win the World Series. Correct. Relax. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Sean, what, what, what so about So I'm going to get back to reality. Um, listen, shout out Leah. Toronto Blue Jays plus 210 to win the AL East. I am, Interesting. I hate the New York Yankees. I think you're going to see a regression from Aaron Judge because it's going to be almost impossible for him to repeat what he did last year. Um, I think this is the year that it officially sours for Aaron Boone. Um, I think I this is the last year in pinstripes. Um, I just I think the Toronto Blue Jays are good. They're getting older and more experienced. Dalton Varsho is going to hit 30 home runs for them. Vladdy, um, Bobachet, and Dalton yeah, Varsho. I think like, that's I, so I love, scary. I love that team a lot, and I think just because they're young, they keep on. They, I think the expectations for them were a little higher than they should have been, considering how young this team has been. Yeah. Now, I, I think that's obviously becoming less than a listed excuse every year. Um, I just think at, at plus 210, there's good value in them to win uh, the AL East. Also, this and that, so that, that's my DraftKings Sports Pick of the Week. A couple other things that interest me. Texas Rangers to win the ALS, AL West at plus 900. Yeah, there's, it's plus 900. If DeGrom stays healthy, yeah, I'll stick I with think you there's that. interesting value there. And then the Philadelphia Phillies to win the NL East at plus 350. Uh, they have the third best odds. They were just in the World Series, man. I know they struggled for a, a decent portion of the, like the first half of that season last year, but <laughs> I just I think the I think they could win. I think the the Mets are going to be disappointing. The Braves are probably who I would actually <laughs> You're just say here is a to favorite hate on all the New York teams, aren't you? <laughs> I, I like the Mets because they're not the Yankees. So the I'm Blue Jays, D backs World Series. <laughs> Turn me up. Leah would be in an interesting position. Uh, she would, would cheer for Canada. I would be in shambles. I would, she would cheer for that, Canada. That would be like a Sabres, Coyotes, Stanley Cup. I would not know what to do. What if both things happened in the same year? I would lose my mind. Um, <laughs> 2025. You heard it here first. Yeah, but I mean, Nicholas makes a good point. Varsho's going to get to hit a lot in, in Yankee Stadium and Fenway Park. That's true. Look at those numbers, man. Dalton Varsho. MVP odds, give them to me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I, I like the Blue Jays a lot. So that my drafting sports pick of the week, Blue Jays, plus 210 to win the AL East in 2023. I think it's interesting that they have, so the Dodgers are, of course, favored in the NL West. They're at minus 135. The Padres are at plus 130. On paper, and this is a little crazy to say this, but I think it's true. I think the Padres have a better roster right now than the Los Angeles Dodgers. The Dodgers have lost a whole lot of yeah, stuff this offseason, yeah. and they haven't really done much, right? They brought in J.D. Martinez. They brought in Noah Syndergaard. Other than that, it's kind of the same team minus Justin Turner uh, and Trey Turner, right, and, and a number of other guys. Tyler Anderson was really good in their rotation last year. He's now with the Angels. Um, so I think there's some interesting value just in the NOS betting on the San Diego Padres uh, to upend uh, you know, the the train that the Los Angeles Dodgers have been in the NL West for, for a number of years here. Uh, Jacob, am I, am I crazy in, in nope. betting on, on the it's San Diego Padres? It's about time, Jesse. Listen, I, I, I kind of like what Jacob was saying earlier about the D-backs as far as the Padres is concerned. I think the Dodgers still probably win the NL East or the NL West, but I, they're the Dodgers, so they're going to choke. And uh, the, <laughs> like you said, the Padres have a better roster. I wouldn't be surprised if the Padres end up as a wild card team and then win the pennant. They could. Um, so I, I, if you're worried about that, you can take them at plus, what are they, plus 500 to win the National League pennant. So huh. I like that a lot. I think it's also interesting. I don't know if there's a bet to be had here, but they have the Guardians and the White Sox both at plus, plus 130, 130 yeah. in the Ooh. AL Central, which kind of blows my mind. Because Andrew Benatendi. Yeah, I guess. I mean, is that what they're banking on? I mean, the <laughs> Guardians were, were a 92-win team last year. The White Sox were 81 and 81. I know the White Sox on paper probably I mean, should have been. Slap, slept through half of their games. <laughs> the, the White Sox, I think, they're, they're, I mean, they were disappointing in a number of respects last year, but they weren't a very good baseball team. Their run differential was minus 31. In a sense, they were actually somewhat fortunate to finish with a 500 record. So that seems pretty bold uh, if you're bullish on 
the Cleveland Guardians, then I would maybe consider uh, betting on the, on the Cleveland Guardians in the AL Central. Uh, Alex says, Carroll World Series MVP. Why not? There you go. Inject it. Why not? Inject it. Jackie Bradley Jr. won an American League postseason MVP. Anything is possible in the postseason. I thought you were going to say he won like a regular season. I was like, no. there is no way that and Jackie Bradley Jr. Didn't won. Steven Pierce win the World Series MVP? I, I do think Steve Pierce. Yeah. I, th- I think I do I, remember that. Yeah. So anything is possible if you make it to the World Series. That's where, like, yeah, I mean, Jeremy Pena, like, for, like, yeah. I don't know if anyone really saw However, that for, for the Astros. Is JBJ year. and Corbin Carroll in those same positions? Like, one might have been a little more favored than the other. Like, if, if, every, if, J, if Corbin Carroll plays the way he's expected to play, him being a World Series MVP, little different odds on that, I think. Are we, so we're talking about Corbin betting on Corbin Carroll to be the World Series MVP? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> if they make it, dude, if I'm going to lose so much money on the non invest if they make it to the playoffs. Oh, my. Oh, I can't wait for <laughs> oh home my. run picks. I can't wait for home run picks. Oh, my. If you get me money on a home run pick in the playoffs, I'll we'll lose. Getting to go to playoff games at Chase Field would be really just. Playoff games are just incredible. I've never uh, The only postseason sports I've ever been to is the Pac-12 tournament, and it was I mean, I saw Arizona. Never been win. to a postseason game outside of the Pac-12 tournament. Nope, any sport. Wow, wow, wow. any sport. Wow. And well, and uh, uh, um, the regional, super regional for the uh, ASU softball. I will say the the wild card game was quite possibly one of the craziest things I've ever seen live. When Archie hit the triple, like the level of loudness in that stadium was insanity. And then I went to the NBA Finals, and I was like, okay, that was nothing. <laughs> I will say that baseball playoffs are, are electric. I mean, I know Chase Field is not necessarily like, you know, the, the best place to watch a game as far as fan environment most of the time. But in the playoffs, I mean, I've I wasn't there in 2017 when Archie Bradley hit the triple in the wild card game. Dude, but it I've felt heard, like you were about to take off out of that airplane there? hangar. Were yeah, well, I was like 10 rows back down the <laughs> left airplane. field line. It felt like that whole place was like you, people talk about it being an airplane hangar. We were about to launch. Like, <laughs> it was nuts. It's Dude. crazy. Just like the energy that comes with playoff baseball. I want of energy. I'm excited for the World Baseball Classic. I can't. Yeah. Wait. I 100 percent looked at my friend and I was like, if Archie Bradley gets a hit here, I'm pretty sure this whole place will explode. Like, sure enough. And then not only a hit, but a triple. <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. Uh, the things I would do to see it. I, 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 yeah. I think there's about three teams in there's like they're like top four team I would want to see in a playoff situation for sure for me. Like I would I would love to see the Diamondbacks in the playoffs and witness it live. I mean, 20, 2023, a little, little bullish, a little bullish, but 2024, 2025. Why Jesse, why not us? Why not us? Why not I them? I mean, Jacob, you're the one who's just talking about betting on the Diamondbacks to win the World Series. So, you know, and maybe maybe tap the brakes a, a little <laughs> bit on the optimism. But, yes, uh, playoffs in, within the next few years, I think, is, uh, I think is perfectly reasonable. Um, but if and when the Arizona Diamondbacks uh, are in the postseason, are in the World Series, Jacob, uh, there will be no better place to get your tickets <laughs> than with the Game Time app. Game Time! Uh, it, is, it is an incredible experience. Uh, I, I genuinely have used Game Time for years uh, when I was younger. Um, we, we didn't really ever want to pay full price for, for D-backs tickets, and so I would go on the Game Time app, and I would find these incredible deals and show them to my parents, and they were like, Wait, what? You can sit like behind home plate for like twenty dollars or something like that, and uh, it really, it really is pretty crazy the kind of deals that you can find over there. Uh, and it's not only baseball, of course; it's all of the sports. There's concerts and all of the different things that you might be interested in attending. Uh, and the best way to do it is to wait until the last minute, which is music to the ears of a procrastinator like me. Uh, save up to sixty percent on tickets when you buy tickets last minute. The best way to support us is by buying your tickets through the link in the description. Uh, So be sure to do that. If there are any events upcoming that you would be interested uh, in in going to with the the Game Time app. For anybody wondering, Jesse says, when I was younger, like that wasn't yesterday because he's one of the youngest people in the office. (laughs) And which Jacob says, like he isn't also one of the youngest people in the office. Older than Jesse? That's true. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm not not the youngest person around here, though. I think a couple people have me beat. Um, 23, 24. (laughs) <laughs> I'm 24. <laughs> there you go. Of course, everyone, 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 everyone wanted to know that on the show. <laughs> uh, that was that was the burning question that everyone had listening listening to this episode. Uh, thank you all for being here, joining us today. We really appreciate your time. If you haven't already, uh, be sure to smash that like button below this video. If you're joining us on YouTube, uh, as I said yesterday, it helps the helps boost 
the YouTube algorithm and we are all Boost about algorithm. boosting the algorithm around here. We'd really appreciate that if you're able to do that for us. Uh, also, be sure to subscribe to the PHNX Sports YouTube channel um, if you have not already so that you never miss when uh, our show here at PHNX d goes live or any of the other wonderful shows that we have here uh, at PHNX Sports. Uh, we really appreciate your time here uh, once again. If you haven't already followed each of us on Twitter, be sure to, I'm not, I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna acknowledge <laughs> this comment. Um, be sure to follow us all on Twitter if you haven't already. I am uh, at Jesse and Friedman, uh, at Sean underscore DePot. Yes. And then at Jacob Franklin four. Oh, so close, underscore. Underscore Franklin four. Correct. Jacob underscore Franklin four. There you go. Uh, be sure to give us all a follow on Twitter if you haven't already. We'd love to interact with you uh, over on the Twitterverse as well. Um, and of course, be sure to give us a follow uh, on our show account at PHNX underscore DBACS. A lot of great stuff uh, coming out from that account all the time. And then, of course, we have our uh, network wide PHNX account at PHNX underscore sports. That's on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, thank you all for being here once again. Jacob, Sean, been a pleasure. Uh, maybe maybe we'll do this again. I don't know. You get you guys are a little little chaotic at times, but yeah. maybe maybe we'll get we'll get you the invite again at some point. Chaotic energy is all we need. Chaotic mm. energy. There you go. That's the, that's what we're going for. Uh, thank you all for being here with us. We really appreciate your time. And remember, kids, baseball is fun, but it's so much more fun when you have money to spend.